Hey everybody, welcome to Obscurities and Miniatures. You may have seen this guy the other day on our weekly painting progress channel. And this is a model that comes to us from Dragon's Forge Miniatures in the UK. And one of the things that really stuck out to me was just how fun and dense the bases these guys have been putting out with their models. Models themselves have a lot of character, have a lot of charm, have a lot of charisma, and I think the bases just really help take it to the next level. And I noticed that they had a recent set, it was the Halfling Questfoots versus an Etten. And while I have no real use for an Etten, I have to say I could not resist the Halflings, which is really weird because you probably heard me moan and groan about the fact that, you know, if I wanted to have shorter people that like to eat lots of breakfast and have hairy feet. I mean, I can probably go look in the mirror or something. <laughs> I don't need a bunch of models. Not to say that they represent me on the table or anything, but yeah. Uh, I had to take a, a shot at printing up some of these models just because they were a lot of fun. And again, just like with the Steel Watch Knights, they had really nice, intricate bases. And so I got a couple of them here, and I wanted to show them off. And funny thing is, I was going to comment on how I thought that these were different sizes. Uh, some of the bases are 32 millimeters, some of them are 25 millimeters, so just something to be aware of. Uh, but again, so the halflings in question, I gotta say, had a whole lot of charm. And you can see again, really nice, densely populated bases. If you're like me and have no idea where to glue, what to put, what to use to make a nice, really impressive base, these guys have done all the legwork for you. I mean, literally. Uh, but I, I dig the detailing on our halfling friend here as well with the frying pan. She's got the axe at her belt, little pouch and stuff. And then, so that one's on a 32 millimeter base. Here we have a more adventuresome type. And again, hairy feet. Nicely, densely populated base, game hanging from the back of her belt, another axe, the loot, I mean she's got all kinds of little goodies there, dig the little pigtails as well. Now she is posed a little bit higher on her base, but I don't see that being as much of an issue. Uh, the rest of the models I actually have printed up were all on 25 millimeter bases. Uh, let's see, for example, so this was a really cool one. This was one of their thieves. See, he's eyeballing a gem. He's actually supposed to be wearing a little masquerade mask there. Uh, unfortunately, I had a little bit of a print error with his crossbow, but I just kind of clipped it off, and I'm going to sand it down a little bit, I think, prior to actually getting it painted. So here's his base. Not much to look at at the moment. Like a goblet and coins and jewelry, but... There's this nice little mimic that is actually supposed to slot in there. So obviously these bases are a little bit more unique. Like these two ladies, I don't know whose base is whose. They both work out pretty well, even without the blue tag trying to hold them on. Just for the ease of filming. Works a little bit better with that. So again, fun little scenic bases, kind of telling their own story. And we also have a female counterpart to the male thief. Again, she's wearing the little masquerade type mask. Tools of the trade at her belt. No shoes. I like the lantern. So here's her base. I thought the rat was a little nice touch. Actually, a couple of these models have little animals accompanying them. Most of them are part of their bases. I didn't print everything in the set, obviously, uh, but there are some that you can print up individually as well. There was a dog and a rat in a top hat, and I tried printing them, and for whatever reasons, I was having a tough time at the time, and I just haven't, it didn't want to print for me correctly. And they are accompanying one of the female bards with her battle accordion. So she's on a 25 millimeter base right now, but there is a version you can have a 32 millimeter base with the dog in a top hat sitting with her singing along, which probably I'm, I'm gonna have to print. It's just so silly and fun. And I can't say I have that many accordion players for the tabletop. 
Her base, nothing special. It just, obviously, if I was going to go with the larger one, that would help a little bit. But it was nice to see that I was afraid these were going to be, like, really big. I thought they were really big when I was printing them. So I grabbed a couple other models of various sorts just to kind of help you guys get a good idea of what to expect. So obviously we've got our Dragon's Forge Knight right here. I went ahead and grabbed one of their dwarves as well. This is from their Kickstarter campaign that recently finished up. Might want to check that out. I'm sure they're going to have late pledges available. And they have really nice scenery and figures in that set. And if you like dwarves, I, I think you'll find a lot to be happy with there. So you can see, if I take those little pieces out of the way, I think if we remove him from the base, dwarves are a little bit taller, not a whole lot so. But that got me thinking that, you know what? If you're already 3D printing all these halflings, there's a lot of actually interesting options in terms of dwarves out there. Oh, I think we're getting ourselves a little banned here. I think we have the making of an all-female diminutive adventurers band. This is like the fantasy runaways. Yes. <laughs> so yeah, she's from Artisan Guild. She's from Titan Forge. But I think, look at that, I mean, they scale really well together, and I haven't fiddled with any of the settings either. With a Mantic Halfling, I know I painted two or three of them at this point, and I don't know where I put them. They're a little bit smaller, but I don't think it's going to make any kind of meaningful impact. Obviously, if you have a much bigger base, that's going to be a bigger issue. But when we have like our thief here, if we slide him up and just slide the camera over, you can get a better idea. I mean, I think they look pretty good and all lined up, so I think if you're out there looking actively for halfling models to fit in with that are currently on the market, both in terms of printing and in plastics, I think they're going to work out really well. I grabbed one of my Stonehaven half lanes, but I don't think that's going to worry. These guys are a little small, but he is dead, so what can I say? Grabbing a Mantic Dwarf, just because I really still like these. I may be in the minority about that, but I still really dig them. You can see here again, size-wise, I think they're going to look really good. I don't know how, they, how do they compare with other humans? Let's grab a couple humans just to see how things scale. A typical Reaper model, a Whiz Kids model. I think in this case the scale gets a little off. The humans look a little too small, or they look just a little too big. Maybe if we have larger humans, our good old traditional witch hunter friend here. I don't know, but then again, these are I guess these are a little bit smaller. Hmm. I'm no expert on halflings, mind you. But to me, I mean, I think this is going to be a fun little set. And like I've barely scraped the surface, there's the giant Etten carrying a boat on his head, which gave me major time bandits vibes, but that just might be me. Uh, there's plenty of pig riding halflings as well. There's just a lot of fun stuff there. And if you're like me, you're going to have a lot of fun, I think, at least getting some serious mileage out of the bases. But they're going to be a lot of fun to paint. And honestly, considering I doubt I'm going to be gaming with them, well, maybe with the accordion player. I think she's going to get ended up painted first. Uh, just there's a lot of fun stuff here, I think, to enjoy. Even if they don't get into a dedicated army or anything, I can see them definitely having a place on my painted shelves once I've got them done. If you're curious to check these guys and gals and piggies and ettins out, I'll have a link down below. You can check out Dragon's Forge's stuff. They have plenty of fun things to offer in their catalog at this point, and they've got their Patreon as well, which will have a link down below too, where you can see what they've got popping and brewing this month. With that said, this has been High Lord Tamberlane with Obscurities and Miniatures, saying thanks for watching, and we will see you back here soon. Bye-bye.